This tutorial is about mechanical advantage. By definition, mechanical advantage is simply how many times a machine multiplies your input force. Now remember there's a generic formula for mechanical advantage of all machines and it is output force divided by input force. Okay, let's remember how we did that in class. We just said FO is output force, FI is input force. Make sure you can easily identify your output force. This is the weight of your load. Remember, that's always measured in newtons. And that's going to be divided by your spring scale reading. And that, too, is measured in newtons. So if you are actually, this is the AMA, your actual mechanical advantage. So if you are actually interacting with the machine, you should be able to easily calculate the mechanical advantage if you know the weight of the load you're using and you can re read your spring scale. Now if we're talking about IMA, that's ideal mechanical advantage. That is telling you in an ideal situation where there's no friction, then you can have an ideal mechanical advantage. Now there are different formulas for each of the different types of simple machines. So we're going to start with a lever. Okay, and a lever has three basic components, a rigid bar, a fulcrum, then you have your load on one end, and then you're going to have your effort or your input force on the other. The mechanical advantage of all levers is the effort arm divided by the resistance arm. You really want your number to be really big. So if you look at this fraction, you want your effort arm to be much larger than your resistance arm. And in order to locate those on here, effort arm is distance from effort to fulcrum. That's your effort arm. Resistance arm is from load to fulcrum. We have a pretty good first class lever here because our resistance arm is going to be kind of small and our effort arm is going to be larger. This works with all three types of simple machines. In order to make the MA bigger for your lever, make sure that you've extended your effort arm and reduced your resistance arm. Frequently that's easily done by moving the fulcrum closer to the load. Now if we want to take the IMA of an inclined plane. Inclined planes are just called ramps. What we're looking at is the ratio or the relationship between the length of the ramp and its height. So if we're looking at the IMA of this, it's going to equal the length divided by the height. Remember our mechanical advantage is a naked number. The units will cancel out no matter what units of measure you're using. Since a wedge is simply two inclined planes placed back to back, we can use the same IMA formula. It's going to be the length or the slope we're going to call this the length and this the height. Okay, sometimes you'll see that written as the slope or the slanted surface divided by the thickness. This would be equivalent to that. The thickness is equivalent to the height. Okay, if we are looking at the MA of a wheel and axle, a wheel is a large circle that turns a smaller circle. All you need to know about this is uh, you want a really small axle and a really big wheel to get a great mechanical advantage. We're going to look at the radius of each one. This is the radius of the axle. This is the radius of the wheel. So, but the IMA here is radius of the wheel divided by the radius of the axle. So actually calculating mechanical advantage on those is quite simple. If we're looking at pulleys, it's all about counting. We have one pulley wheel and a rope. Here's our load. That arrow indicates the direction that you're pulling down. Here's one that has a movable pulley. Here's the wheel. The load is actually attached to that pulley wheel. Then we have one over here. We have a pulley system, sometimes called a block and tackle. the load. And then we have another one where we're going to have two 
going to change this one, up, take that one away. Let's look at this. This is a single fixed pulley. We count the number of rope segments. We have one rope segment, two rope segments. Now when you look at this, the load bearing rope here is not a rope that you pull down on. We only need to count load bearing ropes. So here the, the mechanical advantage is one. Here we have two segments. None of those ropes are being pulled down on by you or by the person applying the input force. So we have an MA of two. Here we have three segments, but if you look again, one of those segments is being pulled down on, so we have an MA of three. So really, identifying the mechanical advantage of a pulley is pretty doggone simple. The next tutorial will be about calculating mechanical efficiency.